Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're seeing me for the first time, my name is Joy. I am your private nurse. Okay, so in today's video, I am going to be showing you and telling you all about CPRO. How to, what CPRO stands for, what CPRO is, how to actually perform CPRO on someone. Okay, so CPRO stands for Cardiopulmonary Resuscitation. And um, anytime you think of CPR, I want you to remember some abbreviations, okay? These abbreviations are, are simple, okay? You don't need to be a doctor, you don't need to be a nurse for you to be able to do CPR. But if you're a doctor or a nurse, fine, okay? So the abbreviation is Doctors ABC. When I say Doctors ABC, I mean D. R S A B C. These are the abbreviations, okay? D means danger. When you are doing CPR or you find yourself in a situation where you have to do cardiopulmonary resuscitation, maybe um, the person is uh, breathless or the person pulse, the person is not responsive, you feel you feel the person's pulse and you don't really feel any pause, okay? When you find yourself in such a situation, the first thing is D. D is for danger. You are going to remove the patient from danger or remove danger from the person, okay? Remove the person from danger or you remove danger from the patient, okay? Then the next thing is R. R stands for response. You are going to tap the person gently and you are going to ask the person, are you all right? Are you okay? Okay. Then you're going to check for carotid pulse just close to your clavicle. Okay. Close to your clavicle on the right side, you can get a carotid pulse. Okay. Check if there is a pulse, if you can see a pulse. Okay. You can also check um, the radial um, artery for a pulse. And you can also check the brachial artery for a pulse, okay? So, but I'm going to advise that you check the carotid artery, okay? Just check if you are going to feel, use your two hand, okay? Don't use your tongue. Using your tongue will make you feel your own pulse. So using your fingers just like this, you place it there close to the bone, okay? And try to feel if there is pulse, okay? That is response. S is for you to shout for red, for help. Shout for help. But you are not going to leave the patient and go somewhere to go and shout, no. You are going to be with the patient while you are shouting for help, okay? All these things are supposed to be very, very fast. It is supposed to be very, very fast, okay? So you are going to shout for help. So the next thing is A. A means airway. How do you help a person clear their airway or open their airway? The first thing you're going to do is to place them on a firm surface, okay? Place them on a firm surface with your hand on their jaw and your hand also on their head. You are going to raise their head upward, okay? Raise the head upward and the jaw forward. When you do that, you are opening the airway, okay? The B stands for breathing. How are you going to check if this person is breathing? You are going to look for the rise and fall of the chest, okay? When the person is lying in a firm, flat surface, you are going to check if there is a rise and fall of the chest. You are also going to put your face very closely to the person's uh, mouth to feel if they are breathing. And you're going to use your ear to hear for any sound of breathing, okay? Hear for a sound of breathing. Doing this should not take more than 10 seconds. It should take less than 10 seconds or 10 seconds. Then the next thing you're going to do is to start CPR, okay? Start CPR. You are going to place your left hand for those that are... Um, for those that use their right hand a lot, okay, you're going to place your left hand, the heel of your left hand, and then cross it with 
your um, right hand, okay? You're going to place it on the chest of the person. Your hands are supposed to be straight, just like this. That is how your hand is going to be. Straight, just like this, okay? Look at how my hand is on the table, like this. And then you push, one, two, three, four. You, you are pushing this, your heel. You are pushing your heel. Don't do like this. Don't do like this, okay? This is not what you should do. Don't do like this. You are, just, you are not moving your body. What you are moving is your hand. You are moving your hand, okay? Move your hand. So guys, C is for circulation. And because the heart has stopped pumping, the heart has a major function of pumping blood. But since the heart has stopped pumping, you are going to do the work of the heart. Okay? So, when you put your hand in this position, okay, you are going to place it just below the clavicle and in the middle of the two breasts. Okay? In the middle of the two breasts. Don't go down to the xiphoid process and don't go to the clavicle, just at the middle of the breast, okay? So while doing the compression, you are supposed to go five centimeter deep, five centimeter deep, okay? And you are going to push hard and fast. You are going to push hard and fast. You are going to give 30 compression. One, two, three, four, until 30. When you do this 30 compression, you open the um, airway and then put your mouth, mouth to mouth breathing. Give two breaths. And as you give two breaths, check for the rise of the chest. Check for the rise of the chest. Continue to do this until the person big starts breathing or until help comes. If you are tired, then a second person can continue, okay? But do this until help comes, okay? D. Um, sometimes they can be D, okay? D in the doctor's ABC. Sometimes it's doctor's ABC or doctor's ABCD. So D is defibrillator. There is a machine called autonomic external defibrillator. So that machine, if it's in a health facility, it can be placed on the person and you would just follow the instruction. It is automatic. So you would just follow the instruction of the machine to give the CPR, okay? So guys, another way to induce self CPR for your own self is to just try to induce um, cough. Just try to cough and if that's another way to induce CPR. The only time you can stop giving CPR when you are giving CPR is only when the person shows signs of life, like when the person starts to breathe. Another way you can stop giving CPR is maybe when you are tired and you want to switch. Maybe you and another nurse wants to switch or you and somebody else that knows how to do it comes to switch. The third reason why you should stop CPR while doing it is maybe when a professional help comes, okay? Or maybe you're working with a team and they tell you to stop, okay? The fifth reason why you should stop doing CPR is when you are using an automatic external defibrillator machine and it tells you to stop so that it can check the reading of the person and know if the heart rate has come back to normal, okay? So guys, I hope this video was helpful. I hope I was detailed enough. I hope you understand this video. Make sure to share this video, like the video, so that other people can also see it, okay? Thank you so, so much for watching. Bye, guys.